and welcome back now last week we did a video on uh, tracks and stuff and we used this little module very briefly just to power up uh, the circuit in dc mode and this is a 12 volt switch mode power supply which bang could have sent me for evaluation and well for telling you guys about it really because when i found this i found it first and approached them um, i thought this could be a nice useful and safe module for powering up our future arduino modules when you haven't got something like a, a wall wart so that's what we're going to have a look at and there's quite a few features on here that make it i think worthwhile considering especially the price as well i mean this isn't a 20 pound unit believe me now there is a problem because this thing here this bulb that i was using incandescent bulb was is a 22 watt device probably says it on it somewhere 12 volt uh, 21 watt device so it's uh, about 1.7 1.8 amps something like that so it's it's too much isn't it that device is a one amp device so i've got to concoct a bit of a circuit with some resistors and stuff to cut down the um, the power from whatever that's going to suck up to about an amp to prove that this can actually deliver that amp hmm could be a bit of a challenge that let's see how we get on um, yeah, now, as I mentioned, this is a mains device. You've got to wire in your mains at the back. But we'll unscrew this from the board when it's not connected to mains so I can touch it. We'll have a closer look. OK, let's let's see what sort of circuit then um, I managed to uh, put together. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, PCB prototype the easy way. You can design your custom boards and order them via their excellent website. Just enter the size you need and select the options from the next page. I left all the options exactly as they were, and my package arrived within a few days. Ten boards for five dollars. The first order is free. And look at the quality. Excellent double-sided boards, faultless, exactly as I specified. And, you never know, you might even get a free pen too. So, get onto their website and order your boards from PCB Way now. Right, so I've got this thing, <laughs> it's a bit of a convoluted circuit on there. Uh, but uh, we'll come back to the minute. Let's have a look at this board then. I've screwed it down to this one. So I'm not going to take this off here just now, especially as it's connected up to the mains at the back there. So um, we'll just leave that quietly alone and have a look at it on the Banggood website. Okay. So they sent me this device for evaluation. There it is. Um, $4.38, which I thought was pretty okay because my thinking was how else do we normally um, power up Arduino type projects? And the answer is we stick a wall wart in the wall, don't we? And that's fine if you if your project allows you to plug things in. But a bit like my my workshop heater, I mean, there was no way to do that. If I'd wanted to power that other than with that little tiny device, uh, this one here, if I wanted to not use this, for example, uh, what else was there on the market? So I had to look around and lo and behold, I found this one. Now, this is a one, on, one amp one. Um, they were supposed to send me actually a, a half amp one as well, which is much, much smaller than this. Same sort of layout. I guess it's the same manufacturer, um, but uh, I haven't got it to test. So we'll just test this one out. Now, this is a, a one amp. It says one amp. Is it? Mm, never know, do we? Let's have a look at what the features are then on this. Uh, so it says easy to install, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So good thing is, look, worldwide voltage. Um, 85 to 264 AC or 110 to 370 DC. Does anywhere use DC? I don't think I want to be anywhere near DC that high, frankly. That really is a killer. AC is bad enough. Anyway, ignoring that, at least it means you can, whether in the, you're in the States or, or America, the same thing, uh, Australia, I meant, uh, UK, it's all going to work. High efficiency, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, over current protection now that was important and sh short circuit protection and temperature protection i thought hmm now this is a device that isn't dumb uh, unlike that little blue one i just showed you it should give you some degree of of um, confidence that it's going to work and if it doesn't work it's going to shut down and finally it says that it's all filtered you don't need to filter the external output for noise hmm we might stick that on the scope in a minute and have a look. Anyway, so it says you can have a one amp output. The output voltage actually is 1%. Mm, okay, we'll test that as well. Well, how are we going to test it? Well, 
<laughs> would you believe it? I know it's crazy. I haven't got anything that takes one amp. This bulb here, this car bulb, takes two amps, a 22 watt. So that by itself immediately should cause that to go into overload. So we can't, what? You want me to try it out? All right then. Uh, okay, let me disconnect this from my meter. And this end here should go directly in here. So watch the bulb, watch, watch that. See, if magic smoke comes out because you're making me do this, I'm gonna blame you, all right? So we connect that in there. Oh, what happened there? Well, that's going flashy, flashy. That's not good. And if you look very closely on there, can you see that? It's just trying to, oh, well, it was trying to pulse. I'm just going to attach it to that. There, look. So you can see the lamp here just pulsing and the power supply unit over there flashing its little light. Basically, overload protection. Well, we hope that's what it is. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so that's that's good. Right, so we knew that wasn't going to work because this takes two amps. Um, so what about this this LED 12 volt thing? Now that is bright. I'll tell you, let me um, take these off. I'll show you. So if I connect these up, uh, negative, positive. Whoa, look at that. That is bright. Yeah, I've got spots in front of my eyes now and the video camera probably as well. But that's no good. Do you know how much that took for 12 volts? Uh, okay, it's mounted on a heatsink because it does get hot. 80 milliamps. If you boost it to something like 13 volts rather than 12, it takes something like 200 milliamps. I'm not sure the brightness goes up though. Anyway, can't use that. That's far too low. So what have I got here? I've got a series of parallel resistors. I think, okay, I really want 12 ohms, don't I? If this is 12 volts and I want one amp out of it, um, I've got to have a resistance at the other end of 12 ohms. So I've got lots of 68 ohm resistors here, six in parallel, that makes 12 ohms. In fact, we can just prove that by putting on the uh, resistance meter here. Oh, doesn't like it being plugged in there. Right, so we're just gonna test what that resistance is and it says 11.787. Why is it changing? That should be as stable as a rock. Okay, 11.7 now. Fine. So that's as close to 12 as I can get with a parallel amount. So we're going to take those out. Stop shorting out those supplies there. Connect this back in. Right, so we're going to measure the current now through a 12 volt 12 ohm resistor network uh, and I'm going to put this on it because even at one amp that should do something well it, it, it glowed didn't it in the last one so let's let's uh, put that on then so that's the negative now this is the positive let's have a look to see what happens and watch the meter oh look at that oh look one amp exactly how about that well, I shouldn't sound too surprised, should I? It's maths at the end of the day. And that is coping at one amp. Now, I suppose really we should just let that sit there to sort of soak test, except that unfortunately we're going to see the magic smoke escape from all those resist. Oh, look, look, the resistance network's fallen to bits. It melted. There we are. So <laughs> they got hot, which is not surprising given that these are probably quarter watt resistors. And... Um, I'm trying to put 12 watts through there. Hmm. Oh well. At least we saw it work though, and it gave out one amp. Now what I'd like to see else then, before I destroy any more of my workbench and components, is uh, just have a look at the noise output on there. I think we'll stick it on the scope. Right, I've just spent five minutes getting this connected up with my scope, trying to tune in to the ripple on the output. And do you know what? I can't. Look at this. Try putting the auto on because I'm keep getting this little position at limit. I can't find anything on there. So um, we'll press auto. No. I'm on 200 millivolts of division and I'm not really getting anything. Well, it seems as though their filtering really does seem to work because I can't really pick up anything on there. You think a few millivolts would be visible? Well, okay. Well, I'll investigate a bit further. So um, how much did we say this was? 4.99 was it or something? Oh, it's 4.38. 
um, not pounds. So for those who work in dollars, that's fine. Um, that is probably going to be about. Well, let's change my let's change my um, currency. I don't know how to do it. Look, there, there we are. That's how much it is in pounds. Look, I've worked it out and I've put it up on screen. So there we are. I think that's pretty good actually. Yeah, I would definitely be using that in my my um, project. What I'm going to do now then is um, I'm going to unscrew this from the board, disconnect it, then we can have a look at um, the quality of soldering and things like that. Right, so here it is. I've disconnected it from the mains now, so it's all safe. Um, right, so what we can we see here? I've um, obviously connected it into the mains here. There's a little air gap. If I zoom in on that, you better see it. So there's a required creepage gap here. I don't know why there's two connections to live and neutral, but there we are. Um, you can see all the AC stuff over this side nicely separated from the DC side. That's why there's a, a nice big gap there where it says sand mim. So this is all live on pointing out here, and you can get a shock from that. So don't go anywhere near it when it's plugged in. Uh, the other side of that gap is all the low voltage DC, and that's separated by a transformer and stuff. This side here, I mean, the, the soldering is nice. Got a couple of um, creepage gaps, you know, to separate the AC lines, stop any sparking or anything in moist conditions. So next to this creepage gap, there's the uh, choke. That choke on the other side of the board there stops the noise from the switch mode power supply finding its way back onto the mains power lines in your house and causing all sorts of issues. So there's the uh, the, the transformer area. Yeah, this looks all right actually. What about the other I side? The right. One thing that did confuse me a little bit was um, what's all this glue stuff on it? So that's the choke to filter out any um, common noise, basically. Yeah, the um, common mode choke, you know, there's a picture of one, is to stop the noise that's introduced by the switched mode power supply finding its way back onto the mains and causing all sort of havoc on the rest of the equipment that you might have plugged in around your house or indeed I suppose even your neighbour's house because switch mode power supplies obviously create quite a high frequency signal don't they and we don't want that escaping out of the units that's what that choke does and um, now wiring it up um, let me give you a little diagram so what happens with the um, the choke to stop the noise you have your your line and your neutral and they come in and basically go like this a little bit like that and and then that goes on to the rest of the circuit whatever that might be in this case our switch mode power supply but basically by having this choke wound in this manner means that any noise introduced here on these lines you know high frequency noise or whatever it's prevented getting back by the fact that these are um, closely wound and it's called a common mode choke uh, and stops that noise coming back on onto the mains back here in your house Simples, really. I don't know why there's glue on this capacitor here this this is like it's not actually hard, it's a little bit squishy, look, you can probably see me squishing it down. Whether it's to give a bit of stability to this, I don't know. That's, um, yeah, the live input goes through this NTC thermistor here. That's 5 ohms. Hmm. And if it's an NTC, when it gets hot, it will go lower, won't it? Maybe, I don't know why that is, perhaps initially it's five ohms and then quickly drops to nothing i don't know don't understand the reasoning for that anyway then you got uh, the actual conversion circuitry here with the transformer more glue down there i don't know why again what's it's not actually holding anything up is it but uh, even the one on the website shows the glue like this all over the place look there see obviously something going on don't know what though and then the output, a couple of big smoothing capacitors, the indicator LED, don't know what that is. Could be a choke of some kind, maybe. And then the output, which is either header pin friendly, or you can just solder in two wires directly. Or, or you can put one of these uh, VH396 pins in. Uh, here's a picture from AliExpress. In fact, it says up here, look, VH396, but it says they're CH3, they're different. Oh, we've got an option. Oh. Talk about give people a choice and confuse them, eh? I'm not familiar enough with these uh, 
sockets and pins and things to know which one's which. Ah, there we are. There we are. Explained. Okay, AliExpress, you are forgiven. So VH93 is the that's the socket part of it. Look, see that? And which goes with the pins. And CH396 is what? Hang on a minute. No, I've lost the plot now. They are also sockets that go with pins. Okay, these are three. No, they're still two pin. I don't know. You guys are probably much more familiar with these things. Perhaps they're used in, in radio controlled models, drones and things like that. A lot more from plug-in power supplies. But anyway, those that board is drilled out for those pins if you want to use them. Or just standard header pins like I did. The good thing about that, of course, if you use a three-way rather than a two-way, um, you can prevent connecting up the wrong way round because you have a space. So you had um, you had power in the middle, say positive, common on one side. If you then flipped a three-way pin like that one down there, that's only using uh, two the outside in the middle. If it flipped around the wrong way, you wouldn't get any kind of connection at all, which saves you from reverse polarity problems. All right such as with my Raspberry Pi that one time. Okay, moving on. And that pretty much brings an end to this video. Um, I think this is a nice little board. I could put a link down in the video description. Some of these links are affiliate links, which means if you click them, it may benefit this channel. Some are not affiliates and they have absolutely no difference one way or the other. But whatever happens, I don't change what I say and what I film because they are or are not affiliate links. Um, now, so big thanks then to Banggood for sending me this. Big thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring my video. Do have a look at their website as well. I'm now going to go and unsolder this molten slag heap of resistors that I think I might be able to salvage. You never know. And uh, I look forward to your comments in the video below. Always good to hear from you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Well, newsflash, guys. Guess what the postman delivered today? This is the small compact version. Yes, I know, it's in one of those horrible crinkly bags. But this is the small version that I was going to test out. This gives out half an amp, but it's arrived too late now. I've done all the video and editing. I can't can't squeeze this in. What I'm going to do then is um, experiment with this one a little bit more and the other one to see if we can pick up some ripple on that output or not. And I think we'll talk about switch mode power supplies in general because it's a, it's a fascinating subject. And to be quite honest, the more we understand about it in our Arduino world, the more likely we're going to be able to use these devices to our advantage. So that's for a future video then, all about switch mode power supplies. We'll have a look at this one, see if it can give us the half an amp, and we'll look at the ripple and noise, if any, on that other device as well. Cool. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.